Ragtime quilts are one of the most requested quilts from the majority of those in my family. Now Wes, my husband, he does not like the ragtime quilts because he doesn't like the weight of them and I always put batting in my ragtime quilts so they're a little too heavy for him but everybody else in my family um, really likes them and it is the most requested quilt I've made. I think including I even made two quilts for two dogs in our family, including Milo. He's not here. He's not in here today, but Milo, who's our dog, and um, one of my sisters had a dog that I made a quilt for. So all in, in total, I think I've made 13 to 14 ragtime quilts. Now some of those have been donated, but the majority of those have been for my family members. Before we go any further, be sure to tell me in the comments below if you've made a ragtime quilt and tell me um, how big it was, was it a baby quilt, uh, did you use scraps, did you use two colors, tell me all about your ragtime quilt in the comments below. And if you like to make ragtime quilts and they're one of your family's favorites, don't forget to tell me about that in the comments below. Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome to The Simple Quilter. Today in this video I'm going to be telling you about a ragtime quilt quiltathon. I'm encouraging you all to join me in or on, in or on. Um, I'm also going to be giving you a little demonstration on how I make these quilts and I'm going to be giving you some tips that you can use whenever you do choose to make a ragtime quilt. I'm getting ready to embark on a ragtime quilt quiltathon. Yes, a ragtime quilt quiltathon with one of my sisters. Now, I need to finish. This, this one has to be clipped. This is a big one. This one has to be finished and clipped. This is for another one of my sisters. I'm one of seven siblings, but um, I have this one to finish for her and all of the things that uh, are needed to finish that one are in here. And then I have this stack of flannels. You can't, you can't see the full stack, but there's actually two stacks of flannels. And I have uh, more flannels, but these are the colors um, that I think we'll be using for the quilt, the other three quilts that I'm going to be making. And we are going to be making three quilts with all of this. This is from my stash. Some of it I recently ordered specifically for the quilts because I didn't quite have enough in the colors that we were wanting to use. But this is the quiltathon to finish this one, that one, and to make three with these fabrics. So my sister who's going to be embarking on this journey with me does not quilt but she loves fabric she loves to look at my quilt fabric she loves to help me pick out projects with my quilt fabric she really really likes fabric in fact i think she's a quilter at heart i just don't think she ever quite got into it enough but anyway it's always fun to do projects with her and i'm going to be doing this project with her and I really want to try to use up as many of the flannels from my stash that I can because a lot of these have just been sitting in the cabinets and I would like to put them to good use. I'm also going to be using a couple of rolls of batting that I have here in my quilt room. I'm really trying to use up the stuff that I have and I I'm so I'll be using these flannels scrap these flannels and it's quite a stash there and like I said I have more just not in the this color scheme and then the rolls of batting so when these are all done I should be moving quite a bit of stuff out of my quilt room I'm hoping it will make a big dent in my stash for sure it will in my flannels if I can get all five of these quilts completed I want to invite you to participate in this quiltathon with me. So here's the thing. I am going to take a month to make these quilts. July 26th, I'm hope, hopefully going to be showing you the finished quilt. So you have a month to make, a little more than a month, 
to make a ragtime quilt. You can make more than one ragtime quilt if you want. The whole idea is just to get in your stash and get your flannels out and see if you have enough to make a ragtime quilt or maybe you want to purchase it. It's up to you. But I'm going to try to use what's here in my stash and look to see if you have some batting and see if you can join me in this little ragtime quilt quilt a thon so we'll all have a month to get all of these done and then on july 26th i'll be posting a video showing you how much i got finished and for those of you who participate you can go to my simple quilters community showcase in facebook it's my facebook group and you can post pictures of the ragtime quilts you've gotten completed. I'm really excited about this because I'm really wanting to get more stuff out of my quilt room. And some of these flannels have been in here a very, very long time. The first tip I want to give you is use your batting scraps. Now I use, I put batting in all of my ragtime quilts and I'll show you a little bit more about that as I show you how to assemble these quilts. I also have some videos out that I'll put in the description below on how to make a ragtime quilt. But I use batting squares or squares of batting and I use my um, batting scraps as much as I can. So I cut all of these out of batting scraps that had been given to me and I believe I've got 44 squares. So that's, that's almost half of a quilt. So be sure to use your batting scraps. This is a great project. Now, if you have white or cream, you can go ahead and use those as long as your flannel's not real thin and it will show through. You definitely don't want to use any black batting, but I even mix up the different types of batting. As long as they're cotton or 80-20 cotton blend or 100% cotton batting. I do mix up the battings. I just, a lot of times, will use the scraps. I do have a couple of rolls of batting that I'll be using, but again, I also um, like to use up my scraps. Now, the, the, all of the fabric for this one has been cut and this ready to assemble in here. Again, this one just needs to be snipped, but these I have all of this fabric to cut up and I'm going to start cutting on this today. Well, actually I started cutting a little bit last night, but I am going to be cutting this today and I will be cutting all of this, all of this fabric into nine inch squares. My batting will be cut into seven inch squares. So nine inches for the flannel seven inches for the batting. I ordered a yard of this fabric. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure to see how many inches I have. Now I have 38 inches which is a good ordeal because I need to trim off and straighten up the edges. I cut two layers at a time and the front of my quilt looks just like the back. So I can get eight nine inch blocks out of this, out of one yard of fabric. Now that is 16 squares, but it will only make eight blocks. Here's the quilt that I have ready to clip and one yard will make eight blocks. And you can see the front and the back is the same. I use the same fabric on the front that I do the back. Now that's going to be important as you are cutting out your fabric. To cut my fabric, I use two rulers. I use my 12 and a half inch square acrylic ruler by Creative Grids, and I use my eight and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. The first thing I'm going to do is straighten the edge. I want a good, clean edge from which to begin cutting. Then I'm gonna take my 12 and a half inch ruler and you can see I've marked the nine inch right there. I'm going to line this up on my edge of fabric there. 
my camera's in the way a little bit, but this will definitely give you an idea. And I'm going to make my cut. And I will be able to cut out four of these from this one yard of fabric. The next thing I'll do is I will cut off the selvages. I don't save the selvages on these. I'm not sure why. I have saved some flannel selvages, but I'm not going to save them on these. I don't know why. I guess really because I need every inch of fabric. Alright, I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use this to cut my 9 inch squares. So front and back, there's one block. Front and back, here's another block. After you cut your two blocks or four squares from that one strip of fabric, you're going to have a little leftover piece like this. Now save these pieces. Here's the another great tip you can use. If you save all those pieces, you can make a brick wall quilt. This is Milo's quilt. It's clean. He hasn't slept on it since I washed it last time. But you can make a little brick wall quilt out of this. And you can make a big one. You can make a quilt for your favorite um, dog. You can make a lap quilt out of it for somebody. You can use a, make it into a wheelchair quilt. But it makes a great little quilt. And I have to tell you, Milo loves his quilt. So my blocks are 9 inch squares. And I always use batting. Not everybody likes to use batting, but I do. I like the weight of these. Actually, that weight helps me to go to sleep. So these squares are 7 inches. The next thing I do is I'm just going to mark these. Now I cut all, I try to cut as many squares out as I can. I try to do that first thing. Then I use my little foldable mat and marking board to mark all my blocks. Now this is something my sister will help me with. And I just line this up from corner to corner and I draw an X. Now some people can make these quilts without drawing anything on them, but I cannot. I like to have a very nice <laughs> straight line to follow when I am making these. So you're going to mark all your squares like that. When you have all those marked and you have all your batting cut, then you're going to start assembling your block. You're just going to center your batting square over your block and you're going to line it up. Now remember the right sides are on the front and the back. You can use clips if you want, but I really prefer to use pins. And you're just going to pin this. And you're just going to you're just going to pile these up. You're going to pile them up till you have huge stacks of them. And for this quilt, these three quilts that I'm making, we're going to try, or that my sister and I are going to be making, we're going to try to make them nine columns by 11 rows. That will make the quilt 67 and a half by 82 inches. And that's really a pretty nice quilt to snuggle under. Once you have those pinned, you're just going to take them to the sewing machine, your big stacks, and you're just going to feed them through your sewing machine. And you're going to chain piece them. You're going to go one direction and clip them or clip them, restack them, and then go the other direction. Here are a couple of blocks. The next thing you'll do when you have all that done is I try to lay out my design on my design wall. 
Then when I get ready to sew them together, I just take my blocks. And again, you can use clips. It may make the process go a little bit quicker, but I like to use pins. And I just pin those together. And I sew my seam. Now here's an important tip. When you sew your seam, you have to back tack at the beginning and the end, or at the beginning and the end. I want to talk to you a little bit about the size of seam. I did a little experiment with different seam sizes, and because I really wasn't for sure what size I wanted to use. So I did three samples. This one is using half inch seams. Now these haven't been washed several times and, and dried, but you can kind of get the idea. These have been washed once and dried once, but you can kind of get the idea. So this is half an inch. This one is three-fourths of an inch, and I really like this one. I think it fluffed up nicely, and I like that it's not quite so long. Now this was done with denim, and these are laying down a little bit. But then these are the one inch that I've been used to making. And I really don't like the one inch like I like the quarter inch. And another thing, you've got to cut these a little bit more narrow than what I've done. I think if we want them to fluff up really nice, they have to be cut a little thinner than what I did. Now, of course, you want to cut these before you wash them. So I will be using three-fourths of an inch, which is this one, on my quilts. And I will be snipping them pretty close together. Another important thing to remember is use good, sharp snips. I bought a second pair because my sister's going to be helping me. And these are spring action snips, so it helps reduce hand fatigue. And of course, the sharper the blade, the less resistance and less hand fatigue. So I will put a link in the description below for these Fiskars. I ordered these off, the, off of Amazon. Here is a change I've made in the thread that I use. Now I have to use the 30 weight white to finish my sister's quilt because that's what I started using. So I do use... A little bit thicker thread. I use the 30 weight of the Aerofil, but I have switched to polyester thread because polyester thread is stronger and to do these ragtime quilts I think it's going to be better using a stronger thread. So that's kind of a new tip is to use the polyester thread simply because it's supposed to be stronger. And you really need that, especially if you put batting in here, because when these get washed and they're large, they're heavy, and lots of mine, the first quilts, the first quilts that I made, you could just hear the threads pop when you would get them out of the washer. So you do have to be careful getting them out of the washer, even if you use these stronger threads, be very careful getting them out of the washer kind of roll them up in a ball and lift them versus just, you know, pulling on one end. Here is another tip that you might want to use. This is for uh, the quilt that was on the wall behind me. You can draw out a diagram, uh, kind of sketch in the colors that you want so that you can see the layout. I used EQ8 when I first started um, figuring out what the purple and black one would look like together. But those are a couple of options you can use for getting your quilt layout. Another thing, here's another tip. When you are finished sewing the quilt together, you know, I told you to be sure to back tack at the seams and on both sides. And here you need to be sure to do a stay stitch 
all around the outside edge of the quilt. That is an absolute must. You need to be sure you do that. Now as you can see, the quilts can be any size you want to make them. You can make them a baby quilt. You can make a lap quilt. You can make a wheelchair quilt. You can make it any size you want. I do hope you'll enjoy I I do hope you'll join me in this ragtime quilt quiltathon. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, I'm really hoping to make a nice size dent in my fabric stash and batting. Tell me in the comments below if you plan to join me and until next time have fun quilting.